Hi everyone, today I'm going to do a comparison between Pastel Card by Sennelier and Pastel Matte by Claire Fontaine. Choosing a pastel paper can be a very hard task, especially for beginners, and honestly I have mainly worked on pastel mats, so I want to do more pastel paper tests myself. And this piece of pastel card was inside my latest um, purchase from Sennelier, a set of soft pastels, and I was eager to try it and compare it with pastel mat. I have a range of pastels here to check on them. It is pretty tiny, so I'll try to do all of them. I don't know how many I can fit inside this space here, but hopefully I can do all of them. Now, before we start, I would like to say that these cards are similar in thickness, they are pretty thick, both of them. Maybe pastel card is a little bit thicker, it could be, and both are pretty sturdy. Both of them are pretty smooth, uh, pastel mat has a velvety touch to it. You see that it doesn't make any harsh sounds or anything, but Pastel card on the other side has a little bit more grit to it. It feels like sanded paper, it sounds like sanded paper, but uh, no, also if I do this for a very long time, it leaves behind a little bit of dust. It, it's like it's falling off, so I don't know how that works or if or more sanded papers are like that. I have no personal experience with that, to be honest. Also, doing my research, I found out that pastel mat can hold, I know that pastel mat can hold uh, uh, wet media like watercolors or uh, alcohol washes with pastels and uh, mineral spirit washes, while pastel card cannot take wet media. So that's something to consider if you are a fan of washes and wet underpaintings with your pastels. Now, let's try this out. I'll start with this one. This is a Sennelier soft pastel. It's very soft and velvety. You can see how much pigment it leaves on my hands. And I would like to see how much it can leave on both papers. Now, I won't put too much pressure on it. I'll just lightly do something like this. I actually have to put a little bit of pressure, honestly. Okay, you can see here, I'll try to blend it later, I'll just leave it as it is for now. And with pastel mat, actually it feels quite similar. I think that it may be the color, but it feels brighter to me on pastel card. I'll try and blend those with my fingers. It creates a pretty smooth effect, honestly. It feels a little bit harder on pastel, but not now I feel that this is brighter than that. Both can create pretty smooth effects though which is awesome for both of them. Now, I'll try to go on top of that with a different one. This is a Rembrandt soft pastel. It's not as soft as that. You can see it's pretty hard for a soft pastel, actually medium hardness, honestly, but it's not as soft as that one. Okay, it takes up a second layer pretty well. And same here. For now, the way I feel it in my hands, that feels a little bit harsher. This, as I said, is a little bit smoother and velvety. Pastel mat doesn't feel like it has a lot of tooth. We know that for sure, but it does take a lot of layers. So that's unique with pastel mat. Now, if we blend those together, it is pretty smooth again. And here, what I feel so far is that as soon as I blend, the colors here tend to take up the color of the paper, so they turn darker. While in this one, and actually they're not the same color anyway, but I couldn't find a 
more similar um, color to that with my pastel mat. So I took the similar, the more similar I could with those two. So the colors feel brighter here. Now I would be curious. This is a Faber Castell um, stick. This is a hard pastel. So if I go on top of that with this, I still can take up a lot of layers here and here. Now, you can see that because pastel card has more texture to it, the lines I am able to put down are a bit wider. While on pastel mat, I can be more precise. That's something to consider if you're doing detailed work. That's definitely something to consider. Since it is, it feels more like a sanded paper, it does have more texture to it and the lines are wider. I'll try that with pastel pencils later as well. But um, pastel mat feels like it can take more detail to it. That can be blended easily as well, I see here. While here, the lines don't really go away. That's also something to consider. I don't know if you can see it, but on this one I was able to blend it all together, but this one leave, left the marks on the paper. So with hard pastels, obviously it's harder to blend on pastel mat. Now, I would like to go on top of that, oops, I'm sorry, with another layer. And see how much abuse those could take. I know that pastel mat can take a lot of layers. This one is starting to leave dust at this point. Pastel mat absorbed, look at this third layer, while pastel card is starting to leave pigment behind. From the soft pastel that is. Which means that maybe pastel mat can take up more layers. Now it's starting to smudge with the layer underneath for both of them, to be honest. But blending on this now is still taking up, it's lifting the pigment. So pastel mat again, not a lot of dust, well pastel card is leaving dust. If I weren't, if I wasn't going to blend, the layers are going on top pretty well. But if I want to blend, the layers here are not taking up. Now, if I do this without blending, the layer stays on top. It doesn't lift off, so the layer sticks to it, but it's not as easy to blend anymore. If I do this, still the pigment falls off. Now, they both seem to be taking a lot of layers anyway though, and I'm still able to put details on top of that. So. That's definitely something to consider. Honestly now, pastel mat is star starting to taking the pigment differently. It blends with the layers underneath, whether I want it or not. While pastel card is able to take the layers but can't handle, handle a lot of blending. Your conclusions here. Now, I know that if you use a, a wet wash right here on pastel mat, it can definitely take more layers. I know that I can't use wet media on that. So obviously it depends on the uh, kind of art you're creating, whether that, which paper will be more useful to it. So far I can see that pastel mat is better for detailed work, while pastel card feels better if you want texture in your work and you're not blending a lot. That's so far. Now, let's take a Derwent pastel pencil and see if it can take up. It doesn't appear very bright on top of all these layers. I'll do it with less layers as well here. I clean my pencil and here it's actually worse. And I know that it's very hard to put pastel pencils on top of soft pastel, so that's not something surprising to me. But um, pastel curd does react better to the, that than pastel mat. With pastel mat, the pencil was pretty much 
lost in there. While with pastel card we do have some sort of detail. Now I will create another layer of soft pastel here, which is just a single layer of soft pastel. Pretty similar on thickness and pigment to see if it would be better with just one layer. I'll use a Carbothello pastel pencil this time around. Now, that stands on top of that pretty well. The lines are not very precise, but they are vibrant. Here, it's pretty good as well. A bit thinner lines as earlier, and they both vibrant and nice. If I were to put a lot of soft pastel though down, oops, sorry. I'm pressing hard here to leave a lot of pigment on my paper. I do that on purpose. I do have a lot of dust here as well. Now it starts to getting dusty here too. Both of them. And a Faber Castell Pig Pastel pencil. That's quite good. I feel that it lifts the pigment underneath. It's like removing the soft pastel and left letting the pencil, pastel, the pastel pencil on top here. The same is trying to happen here, but it feels a little bit harder to do. Not bad, honestly. You can see here how vibrant the white can get, so it's not the same for sure, but it's quite well. Yeah, over here the white is not as vibrant, so again it doesn't feel like it is good for detailed work, but more for expressionism and bold strokes. Now, let's do a pan pastel experiment and some blending with a tool instead of my fingers. It feels pretty good. It doesn't destroy the tool, the sponge here. I can add additional layers to make it more vibrant here. That's quite good. On pastel mat, I know the sponge won't be destroyed easily because it's not like a sanded paper. I can take and add additional layers on top of that too. So here I have similar results. Those Reds are both vibrant and nice. And they absorb the same amount of pigment, I would say. Now, on top of that, let's try a Rembrandt Soft Pastel. You see, it's harder to get as well here. A Faber Castell stick. It's almost invisible on pastel mat. And a Sennelier soft pastel. Okay, that color is hard for you to see, I guess. Whoa, whoa, it doesn't go at all over on pastel mat. If you can see here, I don't know if it's visible, but this is a nice bright pink here. Purple, whatever. But here, it didn't even take the pigment, nothing happened. Rembrandt, uh, no, no, sorry, Derwent. Now that was not very well. And almost invisible here. Faber Castell, not good, not good. And a Carbothello. 
it's pretty invisible but no pigment was left here so with the pump pastel underneath neither of them seems to have the ability to take extra layers now I would be interested to see if a wet uh, wash would do anything in interesting on pastel mat but I won't do it here because it's pointless to compare when you can't do a wet wash on a uh, pastel card but I will do it at some point for myself to see if the um, pan pastels work well with wet media and if it would allow pastel mat to take extra layers. So far I would say that pastel card can take up layers better. It makes everything easier to, to blend but it, it reacts weirdly to, blending, weirdly to blending because it leaves a lot of dust behind. Now if I flick it like that, everything sticks. It's not like they don't stick but they're not as uh, absorbed into the paper as it is with pastel mat. Pastel mat seem to have a harder time with pencils. I'll try on just pastel mat. That's pretty much the same. I tried with a white and a green. Yeah, it's a layering thing. When I have something else underneath, it feels pretty hard to put the pencil on top on pastel mat, but when the pencil is straight on the paper, it feels like it can take more vibrant strokes, uh, more precise strokes, strokes, thinner strokes, all of that. So the pencils on pastel mat feel better, but when I put anything else underneath, it feels harder to put any color on top. It doesn't take layers very well. While on pastel card it's easier to put the strokes on top, but you can't be as precise with that. All in all, I would say that if you work on detail and you like smooth, easy blending, you like to blend your colors together and you like to put details on top with pencils, maybe pastel mat is a better choice for you. If you like more bold strokes and layers showing through, maybe pastel card would be a better choice for you. Now, if you like wet underpaintings, you don't have that choice with pastel card. Um, yeah, I don't know what else. I could try just an expressive layering here. You see, you can see every single layer of that. If you don't like blending, you might have better results. The strokes are a little bit weird too. They leave behind a little bit of texture. But that feels more vibrant. I guess that's all I could squeeze in, in such small testing areas. Honestly, for myself, I don't know. I, I would have to try it a bit more. That's a pretty small paper to try anything on. I would like to have a complete painting or two in order to make better conclusions and decide if I feel that this is better for me or not. I am a little bit hesitant because I have been enjoying wet underpaintings a lot and um, I don't know if I would like to have it everything blended underneath like that or completely textured like that. But yeah, all in all I would also say that pastel mat feels like a more beginner friendly paper for me instead of pastel card. And as for the prices, I know that pastel mat is considered an expensive paper, 
but honestly it would depend a lot on the area you live in. For me here in Greece, both of them are pretty similar in, in price and UART sanded paper is quite expensive to get. It might even be almost twice the price. I know for US uh, artists, UART is pretty cheap and pastel mat is very expensive. Probably because they, these both are French papers and in Europe they are in better prices while transportation to US probably costs and that what, that's what makes the paper expensive over there. And it's the other way around because UART is produced in the US, it's more expensive for us in Europe and cheaper for US artists. So that's also something to consider based on what, where you live. Uh, different papers have, have can have different prices, so it's definitely something to look into for yourself before deciding which one you'd like to try first. I am very curious to try your sanded paper, and if I get my hands on a sample or a pad, I will definitely do a similar video. I honestly don't know how useful that was. You can probably judge for yourself and what you would like to achieve with those papers, but yeah, I think that's all. There is nothing more I can do with that. If you would like me to test something though, something more, and let you know in the comments below, please do that, I will do that, and give you an answer. That's all. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found it a little bit useful, and I know choosing a pastel paper can be very hard, so if you have any other questions that I can answer, please let me know. Leave a thumbs up before you go and consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, be safe, be happy and keep going for your dreams. Bye!